Hey C3 family, this is Pastor Leslie. I'm joined by some of our amazing staff. Pastor Caleb here. I'm Joey. Almost said pastor, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but listen, we are so excited to come into your homes or wherever you are. And we're doing something new uh, where we want to connect Sunday to Monday and make sure that you have enough information to fuel you throughout the week. So we're presenting um, what we like to call our discussion questions. And we just want to talk a little bit about this past Sunday sermon and how we can apply it to our lives. So I wanna welcome you and I want you to take this time to gather your friends and your neighbors, your coworkers, or anyone. So this is the chance for us to have small group opportunity to really dialogue and discuss some of the great things that are happening. Also, while you're doing this, if you don't mind, use the hashtag C3IsMe and take a photo of you all doing um, Bible study together or just engaging in questions with one another so we can see what you're doing. We can repost it. We can like it. And that would be just awesome. So uh, we want to talk about our text from this past Sunday. We came from the book of Mark, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. So we're going to pause for a little bit and I want you all to read that and then we'll come back. So I hope that y'all enjoyed that story. And basically, a paralyzed man wanted to get healed um, from Jesus. And he couldn't have access to Jesus through the traditional way of the door. So they had to come up with another way. And so that was simply our thought from this past week's sermon. There has to be another way. Yes. Yeah, so looking at the scripture, uh, a few things stood out and we'll discuss those things. So the first thing that stood out to me, at least, was that this man, this gentleman had four friends to help him and assist him get on that roof. And I think I thought to myself, I don't think he would have ever gotten up there or got to Jesus if it wasn't for these people. And scripture tells us that pride become, comes before the fall. And, and I look at my own life, I'm the type of person, it, I try to do everything myself. If I don't have to ask for help, I'm not trying to ask for help. I'm going to just do it on my own. And so one of the things that stood out to me is a question that arose is, what in your life can you admit that you need help with? Because we do need help. We can't make this, we can't do this journey by ourselves. So what in your life can you admit that you need help with? One of the other things that we find in this passage is that his friends, the few, had great faith. Yeah. And what really moved Jesus was their faith. And we see it over and over again in scripture that Jesus is moved by our faith. Yeah. And when you look at your prayer life and you look at maybe just your walk with God and your life as a Christian or wherever you may be in your faith, we realize that our prayers are usually filled with our wants yeah and we want a lot of things and i know for me personally i want a lot of things but what i've noticed through this passage and through my own life is that god answers me in my needs he i have so many things that i think i want but god has so many things that he knows i need mm -hmm. and when god answers us at our needs it always supersedes our expectations Absolutely. and you know i'm sure the few friends they knew that Jesus could do something, but what actually, what happened, what Jesus actually did, I'm sure it blew their mind. It went beyond their expectations. So our second question is, what are your expectations right now? What do you expect from God? Yeah. Then our final thing that we talked about before um, we close out our sermon and our final thought towards you is this, that faith is not merely just a feeling, you know, for faith to arise, there has to be action behind it. So we want to leave you with a challenge question. And we want to ask you, what productive thing can you be doing during this crisis? You know, right now, while you're watching this, even if you watch it later, the time and season right now, the coronavirus is a pandemic, and it is spreading like wildfire. But one of the things that we know about crisis is that creativity is birthed even in the midst of it. Yes. So don't let the crisis hold you down. Don't let it capture your creativity, but really challenge yourself and ask yourself, what is it that I can be doing that's productive, that's going to help push me forward and not pull me back and allow me to cower or hide or live in shame or live in fear? Absolutely. What can I be doing that's productive? Hey, 
Hey, we want to say thank you for joining us in this time of discussion. I hope that you had great fun and great questions yeah. uh, that challenged you uh, in this moment. Listen, we want to encourage you, please use the hashtag, hashtag C3 is me. No spaces, hashtag C3 is me through this journey. Uh, we're definitely going to get through this together. We love you guys and we are praying for you. All right, guys. Peace. See you soon. Bye.